Gigabyte Aura's M.2 NVMe AIC versus the ASUS HyperQuad B16 M.2 NVMe AIC. We're going to do a speed and heat test and we'll take a look at the similarities and differences. And the first part, this is going to be in four parts. The first part will be the heat and speed test on the card that comes with our test machine. And this is a Gigabyte TRX40 Designair motherboard. Then when we swap out the cards while we have them up on the table, then we'll do the other part, which will be the comparison as we look at similarities and differences. And then the next part, take those four Sabrent PCI Express 4.0 version 1 drives, put them on the other card, run the test again. Now my expectation is, even though we're going to keep those cards number for number, the uh, M.2 cards, number for number in the sequence, I don't expect Windows to uh, work with those drives. I expect we'll probably have to rebuild it because I don't expect the translation, the uh, disk translation to be the same from one card to the other. But we will see. If it does work, then we go right on. If it doesn't work, that means that once we get the drives on the new card, we rebuild the RAID array. We won't show that because we've got a separate video on it. But once we rebuild the RAID array, then reinstall Windows, which again, we have a separate video on. Then the part you'll see will be the speed and heat test. Now, as we do the speed and heat test, we're going to have four screens up that we're going to show you so I can make this go a little bit faster. Now, to reiterate, our test platform is the Gigabyte TRX40 Designary. We'll have a link up for that. The first card we're going to test is the one that comes with the motherboard, and that's the Gigabyte Aorus Generation 4, which is PCI Express 4 add-in card adapter. Then after we do the heat and speed test, while we're doing the similarities and differences, we'll talk about that when we have two cards up here on the table because, like I said, I've got to pull that memory out and swap it because we want to keep this as much apples and apples as we can. And we'll also have a link up to the drives we used. This is interesting because these drives were available last night and right now they're sold out, which is curious. But these are the Sabrent 2 terabyte rocket drives and these are first generation PCI Express 4.0 drives. The Sabrent second generation drives are out, but just from a point of reference, these are the uh, 5,000 megabyte per second drives. If we had four 2 terabyte of the second generation drives, then those would be the 7,000 megabyte drives. And for those of you to ask the question, which of the brands is better of the three we've tested? Well, I know what some of you have said about Sabrent. I have no idea. We haven't had them long enough. But I do know what some have said about the uh, Western Digital uh, SN850 about it causing BSODs. I hope that can be fixed with a firmware update. So that's where that stands. The third drive is the Samsung, which we have the most history with. Samsung drives we've been using now since we started with NVMe, and I guess that's going on now about five or six years. So it just happens to be that the most NVMe drives that we have happen to be Sabrent. So that's what we're going to be testing with this machine. And for those that have asked, we've had a couple of questions about the Optane drives. Since the Intel Optane is PCI Express 3.0, I doubt we'll go back unless, one, we have somebody who wants to provide the drives. It's not going to be Intel. Two, if it's going to be a client. So far, no one's come forward with that. But three, I'm not going to be buying them because I don't need them. So we'll test with what we've got. I hope this meets your needs. And uh, let's see what we get on heat and speed. Now, everything about this test is predicated on this cable which is the PCI Express 4.0 riser cable. And this is the look cable that we used in the last test to get the staging done for this part. Some of the other staging I haven't shown you. I just want to cut to the chase. OK, we're ready to start the test. What I'm going to do is when I zoom in on this, uh, right above me, you should see the hardware info. Right now, it's highlighted in blue. And that is PCI Express by 16 underscore 1. It shows it at uh, 37 degrees which is consistent with what this shows, which is 38 degrees. So one degree difference. Um, my point is, though, as soon as I execute crystal disk mark, that's the application that's highlighted. That blue highlight will disappear. So I have to go back, tap the application while that's running. So I'm just letting you know. But everything is predicated upon this riser card. So let's see how this works. OK, so we've got the Fleur camera right here next to me. We're running at 36.5 degrees. We're running the test. And again, this is four Sabrent 2 terabyte drives. These are first generation, so these are good for about 5,000 megabytes. So that would be 5, 10, 15, 20, 20,000 megabytes. Uh, plus overhead, we should be hopefully getting 17.5. Right now we're at 15.233. The numbers are better, I think, because for those of you that saw the last test, uh, when we rebooted the machine to go from PCI Express 3 to PCI Express 4, 
it didn't appear like the system completely shut down. It appeared what happened was it just went ahead and booted. Uh, that's why we had such a low reading on that readout last time. This time we completely drained the power before we executed this test. And to reiterate, this is with a Gigabyte RS M.2 NVMe drive. We're now up to 40.5. So we're getting an accurate emissivity reading. We're center on the tape and we're center on the card. And I want to keep the screens like they are until the test is finished. And once this is done, then we'll change the screens. You'll see one input. We'll be looking overhead at the two cards. First the Gigabyte RS M.2. Then we do the, as we're doing right now, heat and speed test. But we'll do the similarities and differences. Now the only reason for you to keep seeing this right now and to keep watching this as it progresses through the test is if we get a BSOD and if that occurs it's because of that cable. I want to reiterate that. The reason I say that I watched a video today where somebody had a video card and they said the uh, riser cable fried it and I thought wow it was on an NZXT case. Cable that came didn't have uh, proper shielding for the cable apparently fried a chip on the card. So that shielding is very, very crucial, and we want to handle these very gingerly. And for those that are asking, the card that's under this is an RTX 2080 Ti. The fans have not come on. It's not doing anything while this test is running. So right now, we're at 15,233 megabytes on the read, and on the right, we're at 15,705 megabytes. So what we're doing as we look at the heat, we get up to 41 and a half degrees, and I believe we've got uh, up to 37 degrees. My curiosity with the software and the reason for the camera is where is the uh, accurate heat? Is, is heat being read according to a uh, mathematical formula or is heat being read according to a thermistor? That's why we've got the FLIR camera up here. I'm curious. Kind of involved to get this set up, but I uh, hope you guys are enjoying this. I think it's fascinating. And once it finishes, then we'll stop the test because we want to capture the screen. And at the end, when we do our part four summation and uh, an overview, then we can compare. In fact, 15,233 megabytes on the read and 15,705 megabytes on the write. So the equivalent of three drives. I was hoping it'd be a little bit better than that, but so that's so much for that part of the test. Now, what I'll do is we'll unplug the FLIR camera, plug it back in so it can be charging. Then we'll go to the next part. So what you're going to see will be when we change with just the two cards up here. So. Stand by. And for those that are wondering, we finished up at 42 degrees, 43. Yeah, right now we're at 41.9, 41.8, 41.7. So roughly 42 degrees centigrade finished the test, and we started the test, and uh, it's still hovering at 37 degrees on PCI Express by 16 underscore 1. So not bad. Let's see how the Gigabyte RS M.2 compares with the uh, ASUS HyperQuad by 16 M.2. Okay, now for the two cards, the Aorus that we've just done and the Asus that we're getting ready to do. So we got to take this Aorus, get this bracket off of here, and get ready for part two. So at the bracket aside, we're going to need a bag for that. Okay, the similarities and differences. Let's go overhead. Both cards are PCI Express 4.0. Both cards are available retail. And at one time, both cards were supposed to be included by each manufacturer for the WRX80. However, only ASUS is still doing that. All the information from Gigabyte has been scrubbed from the press release from the website about the WRX80 motherboard and from the PDF file documentation for that motherboard. So if you want to learn about what was supposed to be there, Gigabyte has removed from the WRX80 package not only the um, Gigabyte RSM.2 card, but they've also removed the Thunderbolt 3 card. However, the Thunderbolt 3 connector is still on the motherboard. That's a 5-pin header. Whereas... Excuse me, ASUS has gone to a 14 minus 1 pin header. So we got more on that in the future. Back overhead. So the similarities are both PCI Express 4. They both require a 16 lane slot bifurcated by the motherboard. And they both have a fan on them. They both have LEDs. But the way the two cards control the fans is different. If you'll notice, there is no way to control the fans manually on this card from Gigabyte. Whereas on the ASUS card, you've got a switch. You can turn that off or on. Fan power. Four LEDs, four LEDs. Whereas on the Gigabyte, when we take the lid off this card, we're going to see a, a set of jumpers. Those jumpers allow four positions, which means four of these cards can be put in one computer. What computer would that be? That's why I mentioned the WRX80, because you've got to have something that has PCI Express resources to handle four of those cards, because that's four 16-lane slots required just for those cards. And if you want to control 
the fans individually, you have to install the software and that switch lets you set each fan so that the software can identify which card it's controlling the fan on. Now, now my goal also was to show the back side of this, but there's no point because on the uh, Gigabyte, since there's a heat shield on the back, it's more of a back plane. That metal back plane, there's no point. There's no point in trying to show that because we're not going to get an accurate heat reading with that. So we're not going to show with the back of the Aris. With the Asus, there is no heat shield on the back. So we could check for heat if we wanted to. It's just a straight PCB. So that's another major difference of the two. Weight-wise, hard to tell since one card has memory and the other one doesn't. So, so we're going to open these up. We'll look at them overhead. You'll see what I see. So that's pretty much the similarities and that's pretty much the differences. So I got my gloves on, I'm grounded. And again, that's the tape for the emissivity reading. So we're going to flip this over, open this up, flip this one over and open it up. And I can take the screws off the back with the number one Phillips. And you have to remember these cards, even though they are M.2 NVMe add-in cards, AICs, RAID is not a function of the card, RAID is a function of the BIOS. We could almost do a video on the documentation from ASUS that outlines how to use this card in other computers with different chipsets, but only with their manufacturer. In other words, another chipset, but still an ASUS motherboard. ASUS has done more to make this card work with other chipsets than anyone. So what else do these cards have in common? They are made for a high-end desktop or a workstation. My experience has been with the X399 and with the TRX40, and I hope it's going to be with the WRX80. We'll know in a few days. But I got to tell you right now, not being able to get a video card, not being able to get a power supply for a workstation, that's just really a, a bummer. Let's go back. But we have plenty of things to talk about with other stuff, such as this. So I'll turn this back up. We'll pull this up. And these drives are numbered sequentially from bottom to top. One, two, three, and four. So we're going to try to replicate that whatever order we see on the other card. Every time they come out with a new one of these cards, they... Uh, do a little bit of a design modification, like changing the way the connectors sit. There's a good example. These are all at an angle. This is the same thing that ASRock had done on their card, and we have an ASRock PCI Express version 3 card. We have that in another card we still need to get to, which is also PCI Express 3 that holds six drives. So uh, one thing at a time, lots of stuff going on. But if you'll notice on this, these are sequentially numbered. Here's the rear I.O. panel. From the rear, one, two, three, and four. So we'll keep that same sequential numbering pattern and see if these cards are going to work. Now, if you notice, since we have this off, both of these cards have a fan. They both have a plug where you can take them off. There's two switches on here, so there's four positions on the Gigabyte card so the software can identify which card it's looking at. Otherwise, functionally, they're the same. Theoretically, the ASUS card, again, like the ASRock. And remember, ASRock started out making motherboards for ASUS. But adopting this configuration, each one of these are in close proximity to the bus. So it'd be curious to see if you see any kind of a performance improvement. We're going to find out. But we're going to use the same drive, so everything is apples and apples. Even if that means having to rebuild Windows. I don't know. We're going to find out. I don't expect the uh, disk translation to be the same, but uh, I don't know what's involved with the circuitry on here. I'm speaking from experience from way, way back, uh, and I won't get into that. So we'll pull these drives out one at a time. We'll see where we go. Now the screws are not on the board, so they're in the box, which is kind of curious. And voila. Oh boy, these are the double screws. That's one thing that ASUS has done on their new configurations. They've gotten away from the double screws. There's a couple of extra pads, and I'm, uh, I'm glad they have gotten away from those double screws. They're a hassle. And with PCI Express 5 coming out here real soon, probably about four months, it's going to change all this. So we've got our double screws. Y'all haven't seen those. Those are a real treat on the motherboard and a real hassle to deal with. That also means we're going to need our special socket. And what special socket is that? That would be the 4.5 millimeter. What a treat. I'll put a link up to that too. Thank you, Asus. So I'm going to gingerly get these out and try to save the packages. The reason being, if I were to ever need any more of these, these packages from ASUS have a part number on them. And if I needed to order some more screws, it'd be real, hand real handy to have that part number. 13020-01811700. FYI. So we'll do our prep work first. Oh, that's interesting. 
these screws for this M.2 card don't work with 4.5 millimeter, which means those are 5 millimeter. So Gigabat, where they've used the double screws, uses a 4.5 millimeter. Asus, in their infinite wisdom, where they use the double screws, have gone to a 5 millimeter. Okay, love it. Now, because these are the 2280, we have the connector on one side, and if you'll notice the markings for the length 2242, 2260, 2280, and at the top 22110. So we're going to take the position 2280. That's 22 millimeters wide by 80 millimeters long. So all across that line. Right now we are at an hour and 42 minutes. Those screws were a little bit of a bear to get started. By the way, this is Builder Buy. I want to thank you guys for joining us, for watching. My name is Gil Boyd. Welcome. Okay, we got our four standoffs on here. Now we'll go for our memory, one drive at a time. And we'll take number one and take it to number one. And yes, we leave the labels on the cards because we work with so many, it would be difficult to know what's what if we started taking labels off. So if you want to take the labels off, that's your choice. We don't. We've mentioned that numerous times, so I don't think we need to go into detail about that again. Now we've got to get that screw back on so we don't lose it. First drive. It's also interesting to note the difference in the way the uh, thermal pad. If you'll notice on the Gigabyte, there's a full thermal pad on the bottom that these rest on, on the back. But if you'll notice over here, the only thermal pad we had is toward the rear where the connector's at. Just thought I'd make note of that. And also interesting to note, the double screws that are on the uh, Gigabyte M.2, I should have, should have shown you that before I put that down, but they're slotted, so it takes a slotted screwdriver to pull that out if I had to change it to go from one of the other three links. Whereas on the Asus, they use a socket. And it's understandable on the Gigabyte, since we have this full thermal pad, it would be difficult to get a socket down in there around that. But I'm just making note of it. And now for drive number four. This is the screw on the Gigabyte, so you can tell. If you'll notice, that standoff is slotted. So to get that out, it's knurled on the outside, but to get that out, you have to stick a slotted screwdriver in there, straight blade, to pull that out and change it to one of these other three locations. Just an FYI. That finishes up the Gigabyte card. Now we've got to finish securing the memory on the uh, ASUS card. Now if you'll notice, on this heat sink, the big difference in the two cards this uh, machined aluminum heat sink from ASUS is a large piece of aluminum. And I've got four thermal pads full length. I've got to peel the tape off. And again, there's a uh, part number here we need to get. Because if you wanted to replace those with the same thing you had, you'd need that part number. And that part number for those thermal pads, 13071-02460. One hundred. Four of them. It says those are made by Laird. Okay, now we need to talk about the distinction of these two covers. We can compare apples and apples. I'm not going to weigh this, but I'm just feeling of it. This is a full aluminum piece, whereas this cover that goes on the um, Gigabyte Aorus M.2 is a full piece of plastic. It's got a piece of metal glued to it, thin metal, but where it, where it shines is the heat sink just the heat sink that goes over the M.2 drives is a copper, machine copper. It's got grooves in it that you can see right here as you look down in there. One big piece of copper. So it's got copper with a pad on it. You can see the impression where the drives were sitting. So it's not really apples and apples. Again, to reiterate, a plastic cover. It's got metal attached to plastic, but it's got a copper heat sink. Whereas this heat sink is one big piece of aluminum machined. You can see how that goes all the way through there. And what they've done to help create the channel for air is this end. They've screwed a piece of aluminum on the, on the end of this because this is a machined piece. It's an extrusion. And then they've cut the hole to channel that air to come back out through here. That's interesting. How, how innovative is it? Let's see if it makes a difference. So we've got to pull these uh, covers off first. So I will gingerly do that. And I want to be careful when I'm pulling the covers off not to remove the pad itself. 
and I'm going to keep those protective covers because I might need them. It's interesting the way this mounts. The connectors here on the bottom edge show just a little bit peeking out. So we would want to be sure and get that tape again right across the center. We may not get a good emissivity reading because these striations which are machined or milled into the surface of this aluminum may affect that reading. So the best place for heat is going to be right here, right in front of those serrations, right about there. So we'll see. So we got to turn this over and put the screws in it. And we can put the Gigabyte up. So we need to put the cover on that so we can put it back in its box. I say box. Since it came with a motherboard, we'll just put it in the bag and set it on the shelf for now. I like the aluminum plate on the back of the Gigabyte. You know, if you ask me which one do I like better, I don't know. Let's, let's wait and see what kind of results we get. I, I don't know. Because the only thing that matters is results. Whatever the test says, if it comes out the same, because this has been off long enough, the system will have cooled down, the drives will have cooled down while we've been moving them. And uh, when we power this up and bring this card up, we'll see what we've got. Now, uh, my expectation is I'm going to go into the BIOS, which we have to do, verify the RAID. I don't expect the RAID to be there, which we'll have to rebuild, which means everything that was on the previous install is gone. So I have to reinstall Windows. I won't show you that, but I'm just saying I expect to have to do all that. All for this test. But we're after results. So we're going to get the screws on this and the screws on this and get this in a bag. And once we get it bagged, then we're ready to uh, proceed on with our test. Pretty exciting. I got to say it took a while to think about staging of this. Part of what I was trying to do did not work out where I was trying to show the uh, FLIR camera on a computer. I got the smartphone connected to the computer. It's all that fine. I didn't think there'd be any problem, but apparently with a FLIR camera connected, asking it to do two things was two things too much. But I will try that again sometime. Like I've said before, we can read about this stuff all day long, but you, you, don't, you don't know it until you do it. And uh, experience is the best teacher. So I don't mind doing this if it helps you guys. Because I'm here to help. And I appreciate y'all watching. And if I don't put this up now, it's too easy to uh, set it aside and forget and then lose parts and then I'm SOL. So this has to be done right now. And we are at two hours and four minutes. I figured this would probably take about three hours for this part. That's why it was so critical showing you guys the staging beforehand with the MNPC Tech mount. I think that's a fascinating mount. And then of course the cable. You know, if the look cable works, then uh, so far it did. If it works on an M.2 card, it'll work on a video card. But again, information never follows a straight line. It's like what we talked about, a vertical mount was not about the GPU, it was about these M.2 cards. Okay, screws are on this card. Now we've got to get the screws on this card. Oh, it's interesting. I found another difference in the screws that come with the uh, ASUS card, and I didn't see that originally. But these screws that attach the back on the ASUS card have a black nylon washer on them, which you can see right there. So another little difference, which is nice so it doesn't scratch up the PCB. And again, I'm treating this kind of like lug nuts on a tire. I'm... Uh, getting them started, but I'm not driving them home, meaning driving them down all the way. I'm just getting them started. And I'll drive them home once they're all set. I can see here on the back of the card the reason for these nylon washers because it looks like some traces are mighty close around those screw holes. There's two of them here. This one, those are mighty close traces. And then this one, they're even closer. So another reason for those nylons. And yes, those traces are covered, but I can see they're a little bit raised, so they are really close. So another reason to use these screws with nylon washers all the way around. I don't think there's any need or a reason to compare all three of the ASUS cards, other than that the first two are PCI Express 3, version 1, excuse me, revision 1, revision 2, and that this one is PCI Express 4. And for now, we just call it the PCI Express 4 version. I kind of doubt they'll come out with a revision 2 for this card. Too close to um, PCI Express 5. But I could be wrong. Time will tell. And based on what we're reading, Kingston's coming out with memory. We'll see it here in 2021, which is coming up pretty quick. So in about four months, new chipsets, new motherboards. And we start all over again. All those screws are set. 
Asus Hyper M.2 by 16 Generation 4 card quick start guide. We're ready for our ready for our bracket. We have our MNPC Tech mount, so we'll get the card mounted. And this is going to be in my wheelhouse now, looking at cases, how I could use that mount. Because I'm curious, very curious. I'm glad to know about this from MNPC Tech. Okay, and again, on the back, this will support sitting on top of the video card and the Thunderbolt 3 card. So we'll get this connector back on. Very gingerly from top to bottom. Connected, supported, and we're just sitting there with the box from the look cable resting over the video card. We have good spacing here, so we should be good to go. So the first thing we'll need to do, we've had enough time for the, uh, swing this around, we've had enough time for the camera. Yeah, FLIR camera's fully charged this time, so we can unplug that. It's been sitting in the box, but, uh, it, and it wouldn't take a charge until we used it, then I could charge it. So we'll turn it on. We're going to need to get the camera up. We've got our four connectors here. One, two, three, and four. So the center would be right about here, that point. So we're going to swing this camera around, see if we can get right on that tape. I'll hold my finger so you can see that should be right on center. And we're reading it 30 degrees. That's cold. So it's um, the ambient temperature is a little bit higher. And I'm kind of surprised on the ASUS card as opposed to the um, Gigabyte. Okay. Again, right there is where we want to read. We're centered. And I've got the crosshairs right on it. So I'm going to come in on that. I know it's cockeyed, but it's the way the stands are sitting, the way I'm, I'm trying to center everything. The computer's on a lazy Susan so that I can move it and spin it around and get it centered because it's the camera that I need center, which is right there. Okay, that's a good spot. Now, we're going to turn the computer on. I've got to get the screen up and get the screen set so then I can go four screens. So first thing we have to do is... Uh, plug the stuff in we got that much set up so we need our keyboard and mouse and though for those wondering about the setup that goes to a decimator MDHX cross converter we'll do some stuff behind the scenes probably later about all that keyboard and mouse is plugged in networks plugged in primary display secondary display so we do the four screens and um, I'm gonna be curious to see if that's seen and we'll bring up power and we are at two hours and 29 minutes We'll plug this in, turn this on, energize, and we'll go overhead and watch. Okay, so I'm going to zoom out right quick for just a minute. You can't see the fan underneath that's, uh, that's on. You can see the LED code down here. And as soon as it posts, once I hear that, we'll go into Windows and do the next part to get this configured. But right now, we got to go into the BIOS. So as soon as we, we hear a post, so we're looking for the BIOS. We're going to see if those drives are recognized. All righty. We're in the BIOS, and that would be number one. Let's go to settings. Let's look at I.O. ports or PCI Express slot number one, 4x4x4x4. Four by four by four by four. Let's look at RAID Expert, see if we see our drives. Controller Management, rescan the disks. Let's view controller information. It sees one physical controller. It sees four disks, one RAID account, and shows that this firmware build time was 3.13.2020. Okay, I'm going to exit out of that. I'm going to rescan the disks. And we see the RAID Array 0. Array 1, RAID 0, 7.9 terabytes. We see all four drives, they are online. Escape that. Escape that. We don't need to do anything else there to look. We'll look at boot, and we see the Windows Boot Manager. So far, so good. We verified in the BIOS. We see all four drives. The RAID exists. Let's see if we can get into Windows. We'll find out. I don't expect, I don't expect this is going to work, but we're going to find out. So we changed nothing. All we did was check. We'll do F10, yes, and save, and reboot. Okay, system is rebooting. I'll listen for the post. And as soon as I hear it, let's see if it'll boot into Windows. If it does, I'll be surprised. Because if anyone had ever asked me if this would work, okay, I heard the post. I would have to tell you, I have no idea. I don't expect it based on previous experience. We're seeing the dial. Fantastic. That means Windows is going to boot. We'll see. If this works, I learned something new. Disk translation has always been a problem going from one computer to another. Things got simpler when we were on SATA, but uh, I expected this to be a problem. 
with an M.2 NVMe? Apparently not. It's still trying to figure out what's going on. So, uh, I don't know. We'll see. If we have to reinstall, I'm prepared to do that to rebuild it. And I also may have to punch it. I've done that before. The, the problem is, after the third time, the fourth time, Windows goes BSOD. And then you have to start over. But I have had to punch it when this hangs. So we may have to do that this time, too. What do I mean by that? Well, when I say punch it, what we're going to, have to do is kill the power to it. I'll shut it down, drain the power completely, bring it back up. Second time around, it should come up. We've seen this before with the RAID driver trying to reconfigure. But again, we changed controllers. Imagine what Windows is having a problem with is because uh, every, every device has an ID that it's identified by, certain classifications and certain device IDs. And I bet you my expectation is there's a configuration issue with that while it's trying to figure that out. Okay, I'm going to punch it. So I'm going to do the power switch. I'll hold down the power switch. Power switch held down. I'm going to turn it off. Now I'm going to drain it. Power's drained. Power's turned back on. We'll energize. See if we can go through that again. Coming up. Let's see how far we get this time. Waiting on post. We are at 2 hours and 36 minutes. I hear the post. Everything in the BIOS is fine. Okay. Screen's coming up. Let's see if we get the Windows dial, the donut. Donut's coming up again. Let's see if it'll boot this time. If it doesn't come up this time, I'll try it one more time. And in after three times, it does not work. Yeah. To skip disk checking, press any key within five seconds. I'm going to let it check the disk. It's confused. Now, by doing disk checking, that says ETA. It's going pretty quick, so it's got some problems trying to see what the, what's going on with the C drive. Let's see, let's see what happens. We'll just wait. I did not expect to even get this far, but if Windows will come up and we see an 8 terabyte partition, then we're in business. Okay, system's rebooted. Nothing on screen. Okay, I hear the post. I see the Gigabyte BIOS. Automatic prepare. Um, preparing automatic repair. We may be better off just uh, redoing this. Wow. Okay. Now, what, what exactly do we have here? Windows is trying to uh, fix itself. So let's, let's go through this and see what happens. I think it's a good lesson because uh, I've never done this before. And for those of you that have, great. Bear with us because those of us that have not, I'm curious to see how far this goes. I don't know if we've saved any time doing this, but this is all about this heat and speed test. Kind of call this part three. Actually, we're still at part two. We haven't gotten to part three because we're not doing the heat and speed test. So we're still kind of at part two. Okay, we're going to choose our keyboard, US. Aha, troubleshoot. That won't do you any good. If we do a um, startup repair, let's see what happens. Now, this is not that big a deal because the key has already been activated. Startup repair could not repair your PC, which is what I expected. We'll do advanced, troubleshoot. Okay, what we need to do is just shut it off. I'll hold down the power button, off, turn it off, drain the power. Power supply is back on. We'll turn it back on. Let's see what we get. If this time it does not come up, then I'm going to go in. I'm not going to mess with trying to reinstall Windows. I'll go in and uh, destroy the RAID and rebuild the RAID and reinstall Windows. And I won't show you guys that. It'll be on the recording, but I'll show you the other part when we get to the last test, which means I'm going to need to turn the FLIR off. But I've still got it on because we're running at 33.5 degrees centigrade. So this card runs a little bit hotter, but we haven't started the test yet. Okay, let's see if Windows is going to do anything this time. We have the donut again. Let's see what happens. Are we going to make it this time or not? Voila, it worked. Okay, wow. So, um, okay, we did not have to rebuild. We did not have to destroy the RAID and rebuild it. We did not have to uh, reinstall Windows either. But we did have to hit it one time to kick it. The next time it came up, it wanted to do the repair. It wouldn't. It wanted to shut off. We didn't let it. To reiterate... We powered off, we uh, killed the power, drained the power, turned it back on, and here we are. Voila. So now we need to get our dual screen set up so we can run our test again. So first things first, all the software is still there. So we should be able to call this up and see if it'll remember its position. We want sensors only, and we are going to look at the sensor for PCI Express underscore by one, and we're going to run Crystal Disk Mark. And they do not remember their position. So let's see if we can get this up the way we had it before. Okay, we've got the two screens up. Let's see if we can run the test. Now, as we're looking at the camera, 
I'm going to come in on that on a close-up. We're at 34.7, and that's about as close as we can get and still get a good reading on it. Okay, let's see if we can run the test. Now, what we're looking at on PCI Express underscore 1 is 37 degrees going to 38, and right now we are at 34. So we're seeing the sensor from hardware sensor above me, and then in the uh, screen next to that, we're seeing the read speed and the write speed on this card with three drives. Don't care for the read speed right now. And we're seeing the emissivity reading on the camera. We're looking at 35.4 degrees. And the software sees PCI Express a 16 underscore 1 at 38. So let's see how this test progresses. I want to keep this on all four screens. So what we're watching right now is the heat and speed test for the uh, ASUS Hyper M.2 16 PCI Express 4 add-in card. And to reiterate, since we did the first test, these are Sabrent first generation 2 terabyte drives. They're capable of 5,000 megabytes each. If they were second generation, they would be good for 7,000 megabytes each. And uh, wow, I'm, uh, I'm really surprised. I'm kind of choked on that. I expected this card to do better. We've done apples and apples, and with the ASUS card, we're not getting the reading that we should, that we had with the, uh, the Gigabyte. So I'm going to have to do some investigation on that and see. I'm curious if we're actually seeing all four drives. According to the BIOS, we are. According to Windows, I'm, I'm going to go back and double check that. But right now, we're seeing the equivalent of two drives, 10,364. So 5, 10, 15. We had 15,233 on the uh, read for the gigabyte. And uh, what I'm curious is what we're going to get on the right. That's terrible. So as we go through this and this runs, temperature's not bad. We're 35, 36.5. We're staying pretty consistent. That's constant. And the software hardware info still sees 38. It has not fluctuated. So that's why I am uh, curious if that's reading a formula based on voltage. Whereas this, I know, is actually reading heat. And this is as accurate as an emissivity reading as we can get looking across that tape. And we're staying at 36.8, 36.9. That's as high as we've gone on heat. 37. 37.1.2. Okay. Now, on our read, we're 10,363 megabytes. And on the right, we're 14,417 megabytes. So, uh, I... I would not have expected that, but I am going to go check and verify that we see all four drives in Windows. That's not, uh, I wouldn't think a card could make that much difference. But based on the numbers we're seeing, everybody wants the uh, ASUS HyperQuad B16 card, PCI Express 4. Well, from what I'm seeing right now, I'd rather have the uh, Gigabyte card. Now, for those that complain about the fan being too fast or too, lo too loud, too noisy, you can install that software and control that. But my concern is, is is installing extemporaneous software because of what you have to do for that software. I don't I don't care for gigabyte software. I'm just saying. And I want to let this finish because everything was predicated on this look cable and it's working. There's a lot going on here to get this to work. I would be curious for somebody else to try this test and see what kind of results they get because uh, I did not expect this. And we know it's not an issue with PCI Express 4 versus PCI Express 3. We know that for a fact because the system has been off when we change the cards around. And I'm, I'm watching everything because we got, we got four cameras here running to uh, make sure this is all going correctly. So I've got seven inputs going, actually eight because I'm watching the video switch to make sure everything is, is functioning correctly. And our temperature stays at 37.7 and on the card it's at 38. It was highlighted but as soon as I touch that other application, it becomes active and the highlight goes away from this one. I'd reach back and touch it, but what it takes to make that to go dual screen, I've got it set. I want to leave it. So 38 degrees, it hadn't fluctuated. And this is staying at 37.2. Uh, results are what it's all about. So on an 8 terabyte partition with four drives, we're getting 10,364 megabytes on the read and 14,417. Contrast that 10,363 with 15,233 and the uh, 14,417 with 15,705. Wow. I, I would not have expected that. Let's go double check the card. Excuse me. Let's go double check Windows and make sure we see four drives. 
That's just, uh, that's bizarre. That's just bizarre. Okay, we're going to go back to one screen. So much for that test. Let's, uh, let's go look at windows. And you can see our numbers up here. We stayed at 38 degrees. Temperature measured in vicinity of PCI Express slot. Never changed. Curious. But those numbers, that just, uh, that's kind of got me wondering. So I'm going to go to Control Panel. I'm going to look at Device Manager. And let's see how we see our drive. There's our RAID array. I'm going to do one other thing. Let's bring up RAID Expert. Run it as Administrator. Okay. So right click. Run as Administrator. And let's see what we've got. Okay. We've got four disks all online. So it sees all four disks. That's not a problem. And it shows each drive. NVMe Generation 4x4. Disk 0, 1, 2, 3, and 4. What about you guys? But I would not have expected that. Um, I, I would not have expected that. Now, you know, everybody, your results may differ. Your results may, may vary. But uh, these are the results we got from this test. So to reiterate, okay, we've tested the first AIC, which is the Gigabyte Aorus M.2. And we've used the same four drives on both cards. So the first part was the first test. And then the second part, we looked at and talked about the uh, similarities and differences of the uh, two add-in cards. And for the third part, we've now seen the results and we're looking at the drives because on the third part, we've tested the uh, Asus Hyper M.2 by 16 card. And as we run the results, as we're doing this summation, I'm, I'm stumped. I'll, uh, I'll put those numbers up as an overlay on the screen so you guys can see and compare. But the results pretty much speak for themselves. So if you're looking at the two cards and you're going to compare apples and apples, we get better performance, which I didn't expect based on this test, from the Gigabyte Aorus versus the Asus HyperQuad M.2. They should be the same. Um, wow. So um, in this next video, I, I'm, I'm trying to soak all this in because I didn't expect these results. I expected this to be equal. But coming up in the next video, I think it's time we take a little bit of a turn since we're doing a lot of stuff about content creation that uh, we take a look at a monitor and it's going to be a segue in for another motherboard we're going to look at. So what we're going to take a look at is an Asus ProArt content creation monitor, something you can do color grading on. So I want to thank you guys for watching. This is Builder By. My name is Gil Boyd. Uh, I try to keep this as short as I could. This is a total we're pushing right out two hours and 57 minutes. Y'all won't see all that. I will condense it down as much as possible. But I thank you for watching. I hope everybody enjoyed this, one card versus the other. And uh, we might run the test again sometime and, and do another comparison. But this is about as apples and apples as you can get. And again, this is on the uh, Gigabyte TRX40 Designator Motherboard. So I want to thank you guys for watching. We're on to the next video. We're out.